guys, so today's video is my monthly needs, nopes, and wants video. So in this, we talk about sort of, it's kind of my will I buy it style video for the month. We talk about the things that I know I need. So things that I've kind of assessed inside of my collection of skincare, hair care, and makeup, etc. that I'm probably going to need to purchase. And then we talk about the things that I'm not interested in. So I'm calling those the nopes. So this is kind of me anti-hauling some things that just don't interest me and talking about why. And then I've got kind of a list of wants. So these are not things that I need. Uh, there are things that have caught my eye. It doesn't mean I'm going to purchase every single one of them, but I did want to share with you some of the things that I have on my radar and why I'm interested in them. So let's go ahead and get right into these because this video is always super long. And let's talk about the few things that I know I need this month. First up, I am looking for a new facial oil that I can use primarily at night. I don't typically use facial oil during the day unless I feel like my skin is just incredibly dry for some reason even after doing my skincare routine. I was using a facial oil at night. It was actually a serum from Paul's Choice. I'll put it up here on the screen, but it's their uh, super antioxidant serum with retinol in it. It's a fantastic serum. I used it for years before I went and got a prescription strength retinol. And if you're just starting out in anti-aging, you're in your you know late 20s, early 30s, and you're like, you know what, I'd like to sort of start getting some vitamin A retinol type forms onto my skin, I don't think you need to go straight to a prescription strength. And then it also has a blend of sort of oils and uh, emollient type binding agents to kind of bring it all together. It, it feels like an oil when you put it on your skin, but it sinks in really easily. What I realized is that I liked having that oil as kind of my final step at night to kind of seal everything in, but I didn't want to add more retinol on top of my skin. I felt like the tretinoin is doing everything I needed to do, and I didn't want to layer more retinol on top of that. So I'm just about done with this little tube that I have, and so I, what I've decided to do is actually just go and look for a facial oil that's not super expensive, because here's the thing. And this is me just speculating based off of reading way too many ingredient labels. Most super expensive, in my opinion, most super expensive facial oils are complete and utter ripoff. When you look at the back of a bottle of facial oil, they're all using similar fa facial oils. They are all blending similar um, styles of jojoba oil and rosehip oil and so on and so forth. Like you look at those super expensive facial oils and I can show you three four or five different drugstore brands that are also using those oils. So the cost of the product itself, I know, is not expensive. So I didn't want to spend an obnoxious amount of money on a facial oil. I just don't think it's worth it. I am looking for a combination facial oil that is going to sink into my skin and is going to be very nourishing and hydrating. But I, like I said, don't want to pay $80 for a bottle. Now, I kind of looked at a bunch of different ones. I had looked at the Burt's Bees um, Complete Facial Oil. Um, this one has rosehip, rose hip seed extract, jojoba oil, um, evening primrose seed, um, barago seed oil, wheat germ oil, hazelnut, hazel seed oil. The reason I kind of eliminated this one off my list though is fragrance is the third ingredient. So, uh, and then you also at the very, very end, you do see a uh, linalool and uh, limo limonene, which is uh, extracts from citrus oils. So, I was I liked some of the base ingredients, but not all of them. The price point was great because it was only ten dollars for a half ounce. That's kind of what I was hoping to find. The other one that I've looked at and considered is one from Pacifica. They do a super flower rapid response face oil with rose and blue tansy. Uh, this one has in it. Um, sunflower seed oil, safflower seed oil, jojoba seed oil, blue tansy leaf, as well as argan oil and uh, rose flower extract. This does have perfume at the, as the very last ingredient, which I didn't love. Everything else was fine, kind of decently cleaned up, but my gut told me that the bulk of the oil that's in there is actually just sunflower seed oil and safflower seed oil, which is not, like I would have liked to see m more argan oil higher or jojoba seed oil higher. Then I stumbled on the one that I do think I'm gonna get. So it's two ounces for $19.99. It's from Derma E. It's their Sun Kiss Alba Radiant Glow Oil. This one actually has sunflower seed oil right at the top, but then it has jojoba seed oil, 
Um, it has pumpkin seed oil. It also has sea buckthorn oil, which is a phenomenal oil, but I don't really care for it in its natural state because it's almost red and it can actually dye your skin, uh, at least the version that I've tried. Um, so I like it kind of blended in here. It also has argan oil, um, vitamin E, and then it says natural fragrance oils, but it's at the very end of it. So I feel like this one is probably the closest to what I want to see in my oil because it has argan, jojoba, and sea buckthorn. So I feel like that's the one I wanna try. And at $19.99, that is an incredible, incredible price for two ounces. And it's got almost a perfect review out on Ulta's website. It has had 173 reviews and it's four and a half stars out of five. So that's impressive. So I do think I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up probably pretty early in the month because I'm very close to running out of that other uh, facial oil. The other thing that I'm probably going to need to pick up is another serum. So the I'm currently using the Ordinary's um, Alpha Arbutin 2% and Hyaluronic Acid. Alpha Arbutin is something that I was not very familiar with, but I had uh, watched a video from, oh, I can't think of her name. She's a biochemist who formulates skincare products specifically, but also makeup. She's got a really interesting channel. I will link the video which I watched her talk about skincare ingredients and which ones actually truly do things and which ones are, there's scientific evidence to say they work in skin, but practically they don't work in skincare. It's very interesting. There's, she, she talks very highly about, you know, there's a lot of scientific studies that will show an ingredient to be incredibly effective. However, practically when you go and formulate it, put it into bottles, package it, and then put it out into the real world, that effectiveness is pretty much gone. So she really breaks down what ingredients do things and which ones, um, not to say they can't work, but frequently don't work, I guess, inside of skincare. And so fascinating video, but one of the things she had recommended instead of vitamin C, if you're interested in brightening your skin and fading sunspots, she had recommended alpha arbutin as opposed to vitamin C, and she gets into all the reasons why in that video. I found that The Ordinary had a hyaluronic acid alpha arbutin 2%, which was kind of the level she had recommended in a serum for a really affordable price. So I've been using it in the daytime. I'm gonna start moving probably later this month to using it morning and night, because I really wanna see over the next few months if I really see some fading of sunspots and brightening of my skin overall. Um, so I'm gonna pick up that. And then the other thing I intend to pick up is a um, exfoliating scalp scrub. Um, there's one from Kristen S at Target that I'm really interested in. It's her instant exfoliating scalp scrub, I think is what it's called. This is something that really interests me because I feel like I use so much dry shampoo that I get buildup in my scalp. And so like, I'll just like scratch my head and I'll feel like I've got like gunk under my fingernails, which I don't like. Like I would like my scalp to feel clean. I don't feel like I have dandruff, but I definitely feel like my scalp needs a good scrub. I've not bought any scrubs and I don't want to spend a fortune on one at Sephora or Ulta. So I think I'm going to try Kristen S. I've been super impressed with her dry shampoo and just the thoughtfulness of her whole hair, hair care line is, it, it intrigues me. She is a brand that intrigues me. So I do intend to pick that up, but that's kind of it for what's on my needs list this month. So let's transition to my nopes list. So things that I'm just gonna officially anti-haul off my channel and I'm just not interested in. Um, real quickly, I did forget to mention in the intro, I, I frequently don't think to film my makeup looks before I sit down and then I get a lot of questions about how to do my eyeshadow or what's on my face, etc. And I'm also for crap about remembering to write these things down as I'm getting ready. So then when I go to do my description box, oftentimes like a week later, I don't remember what's on my face. Some, most of the time I'll remember eyeshadow, but then I will have no memory of like what foundation I'm wearing, etc. So I made myself sit down. I did a chat to get ready with me. I think that will be up before this video. And so I will link it down below if you're kind of curious about my makeup here. If I had one goal for myself right now for my channel, it would be to film more of me getting ready on sort of tutorial style videos and get them out to you guys and then remember to write these things down so I can put them in the description box. Neither here nor there. All right, so now let's talk about nopes. Um, at the risk of being slightly snarky, I, I, I kind of feel like I have to say almost every holiday collection that's coming out is on my notes list. I am just not motivated by this like 
bulk packaging style of makeup that tends to come out at Christmas time. I never have been, even before like a channel where I was talking about like makeup and stuff like this, I would never go into Ulta and Sephora and like go hog wild. And you know, the one exception I think I've made over the years to holiday makeup was buying Mac, like buying collections from Mac at the holidays. But I always felt like that felt like regular Mac makeup just in cute packaging as opposed to like mass manufactured from China kits where the quality is usually crap and it's like combined into this multi-leveled package of cardboard monstrosity. Like the 12 year old Sarah would have loved that stuff. The 39 year old Sarah is just not impressed. So pretty much everything that Too Faced and Tarte and I'm going to say Stila and Becca and all these guys do to make these like holiday kit kind of stuff or these big eyeshadow palettes with face palettes and so on and so forth. I, oh yeah, Pure, Pure does it, um, Bare Minerals does it. Like I just, it, it does nothing for me, honestly. It does nothing for me. Now, if you can come out with a holiday eyeshadow palette that's really beautiful, that fits inside of your normal aesthetic of your makeup brand, things like the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Palette, love that idea. I, I have loved historically some of the Hourglass palettes because they are reminiscent of their normal line, just put into really pretty, beautiful, lovely packaging for Christmas time. So I feel like there's a difference between high quality, same quality makeup that's just packaged in a beautiful way for holiday that I've seen some brands do. And then this mass manufactured junk and or like kits of mini lipsticks that I see so many other brands doing. I am not a mini lipstick lover. I don't love the feel of mini lipsticks. I don't like applying mini lipsticks. I just, I don't know. So nothing about the minis department really calls to me for the most part. So yeah, I mean, if you are looking for me to be super in to trying all these makeup kits and giving you feedback from all these different brands, I'm, I will sit here and tell you I'm not gonna be your girl. So there's that. I will admit that some of the collections from Hourglass catch my eye um, and a few other brands. This year, less so. So they did another one of their six pan um, Hourglass palettes. To be honest, I own one of those. I bought it last year. The ones prior to that all had something that I didn't really enjoy about them, either a color that didn't work for me or a product that had too much glitter in it. And so the one I kind of had held off for years and years and years and had never purchased one of those six pan palettes from them. I did pull the trigger last year and purchase the holiday one from last year. So this guy here, I'm gonna try not to blind you with my lights. Uh, so this guy here, and I love this palette. I've traveled with it a ton this year. It's got bronzers, it's got a setting powder, it's got two blushes, a beautiful highlighter. Everything in here works for me. So to me, even though this was a slightly pricey product last year, I was I was a-okay with it because this is a perfect travel palette for me and I've used it quite a lot this year. So this year's six pan didn't really call to me the colors, the story. I don't feel like there's anything that they're giving me in this year's palette that I don't already have, and I don't need them in multiples. I do think that they need to kind of refresh this idea because I feel like they've been doing it for years and years and years. And obviously they're gonna probably keep doing it until they see sales just kind of fall off for it. So if sales are still up for those six pan uh, palettes and the face palettes rather, they'll keep selling them. I do think they made a smart decision this year and did a little blush quad and this, caught my eye uh, somewhat because I thought, oh wow, those are beautiful blushes. I don't own any of those shades. I think one was a permanent collection and three were uh, new colors that they've never put out before. And I thought it was pretty, I, I don't feel like I need it, number one. And number two, I saw it in store and the base packaging is like clear plastic. Like it, it just feels cheap. And I don't think the product inside is cheap and it didn't feel cheap. But the base packaging, for some reason, because they decided to go with a clear frosted plastic, it just doesn't come off as the luxury experience that I want to have when I'm paying that big of a price point. So uh, that one, even though I think it was a smart decision on their part, the packaging aspect of it really kind of, I don't know, it kind of dissuaded me from 
really being interested in it at all. They also released three scattered light, like a little bundle set of the scattered light um, eye trios. I like the scattered lights. Um, two of the shades are existing and one is new. I looked at it in store, but I just, I don't feel like I need those shades in my collection. I bought the two scattered lights that called to me and I've gotten great use out of them. I don't feel like I need more of those in my life right now. So that's also gonna be a pass for me. In terms of Fenty, they're a brand that I tend to think of as putting out higher quality holiday collections. They're thoughtful, their packaging usually looks nice, they aren't just capitalizing on mass manufactured crap coming from China, and they really have a, a, thought, a well thought out collection. I do think they were really smart in sending out a little mini set of lip glosses like I alluded to earlier. I don't really like mini sizes of lip products. I just, I don't like the feel of them. I don't like how they sit inside my overall collection. I, I, I don't know. I, I get that it's probably a more not economical, maybe a smarter choice because of how infrequently I use up entire things of lip products, but I just don't like the experience of minis and applying them. I do think though, launching the Fenty, the, the five rather, gloss bombs in different colors really made sense. I really like some of the colors they included in here, so I do feel like um, if they ever release full sizes of these, I think they would get some attention out there as well, and maybe that's what they're kind of testing out is, you know, putting these out into the market and seeing which ones get the most buzz and then expanding a shade range. They did put out their second Diamond Balm, which is like a pink shifting highlighter. Um, I don't own any Fenty highlighters, mostly because I feel like they all come loaded, most of them, most of them, not all, but all 90% of them come loaded with glitter. Um, the little split pans have a very glittery side and then a side that's not glittery. If they would ever put the side that doesn't have the glitter in it out as a single, I might consider trying those because I think the texture feels really nice of those, but I don't like glitter on my face. I do everything in my power to avoid looking like I've sprinkled craft glitter all over my face before walking out the door, and that's being very dramatic. I get that most of these glitter products don't look like craft glitter on your face, but I just, I want people to look at me and be like, oh, is her skin super glowy? Not, oh, she's got glitter all over the tops of her cheeks. It's personal preference. So that Diamond Bomb highlighter, as well as the first one, as well as the second one that's just been released is like Glitter Central. So we're gonna talk about some ColourPop stuff that I am interested in. I do wanna talk about some things from ColourPop that have been released that I'm I'm not interested in. Um, and one kind of makes me sad to say it, but um, Sophia Nygaard just put out a new um, collection of six lipsticks with them. I love her, I love her channel. I followed her since before when she was on Buzzfeed and then when she started off on her own to uh, start her own channel. So I've followed her for a long time. I like her, I think she's hilarious. I think her videos are really well thought out and really edited well. And the whole idea for her collection was these like Franken lipsticks because she's gone in and like put every red lipstick at the drugstore into a pot and melted it down to see what shade you would get. And I, she's done all of these like lipstick creation videos to make these like Franken lipsticks where she's melted down a whole bunch of stuff just to see what the shade would be. And I think it's a really smart move on ColourPop's part because I do think that there is an audience that is not necessarily following ColourPop that's following uh, Saf and will definitely be uh, introduced to ColourPop in a new way. And so it's an expansion of an audience base for ColourPop. So I think that's really smart. I also feel like it's just such an obvious thing that I'm like, I can't believe nobody else has asked her to do a lipstick collab before. I like the shades that she has. In fact, the main photo shot of her with that sort of brownish lipstick, I think it's stunning, like the smoky eye with the brownish lip. It's gorgeous. Like I, I looked at that and I was like, oh, I really wanna recreate that. Uh, the only reason this is on my nope slip because I like her and I like the colors. I don't like that Lux lipstick formula. I feel like they're really hit and miss, and I've decluttered all but maybe one out of my collection at this point. I just am hesitant to buy anything in that Lux Lipstick line because I've had such hit or miss experiences with the formulas. I just don't know if I'm really ready to take a risk on these lipsticks given my past experience, and I've tried probably six different shades from them, so it's not like I've tried one and feel like this way. I mean, it really has been, a decent number that I've tried, purchased, and then given away to friends or decluttered. So 
I have also made the decision to skip on the So Jaded palette. So I followed Kathleen for years and I definitely have been one of those people who have purchased quite a few of her sort of collabs with ColourPop. I still maintain Dream Street is one of the most beautiful palettes out there. And I think Kathleen has an eye for color that not everyone has. And so I frequently like how she looks and com at and combines colors inside of eyeshadow palettes and just in general um, with how she applies makeup. So I'm kind of walking away from this palette for two reasons. One, I don't like big bulky palettes. I find them difficult to store and they don't fit in my drawers well. And so what ultimately usually ends up happening is I put them up in a little like thing that hangs on the back of my dresser, not my dresser, my closet door over here. And then I always forget to pull them in. I forget to reach for them when I'm doing my shop, my stash, because it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. And so because the storage is funky, because these giant palettes take up so much space, I tend not to like just the size of them. The other problem I have with these giant palettes is I, I feel like one of two things happens with giant palettes. Well, let me first explain why I like smaller palettes. I like smaller palettes, and I'm not talking about six shadows. I, I mean, 12, 14 shadows is fine, but like when you start getting much beyond that, you tend to have, it becomes harder to edit a color story. And I buy eyeshadow palettes for color stories, for color theory, for combining shades in interesting ways and causing me to think about color and how I wanna work with color on my eyes in a unique way. That's what inspires me the most about eyeshadow palettes is that, color story that they can tell that causes me to think about color and apply color in fun ways. So what happens when you get into these bigger palettes is typically one of two things. If they decide on a color story, so I wanna have a very clear color story. It's, it's mauves with a pop of teal or it's coral with a pop of teal or it's you know a neutrals palette. If you want to hone in on a specific color story, the way that you do with these smaller palettes, all of a sudden you've got a big palette and to fill it up and still have a cohesive color story, what happens is you end up with shades that are incredibly similar to one another. I'm looking at every Morphe palette that's ever been made. The shade ranges of those browns is insane. Like there's like 15 browns in there or 10 different golds. Like I want to see, I see the color story, but I also see how I could have edited it down and made it half the size. So that's one issue with larger palettes. The other issue can be, it's just an explosion of color. Like it's just color for the sake of color in a palette. And I do feel like the colors that Kathleen picked are really pretty. And if she had chosen to take two pal make two palettes and kind of do a warm story and a cool story, I might have actually picked up one or both of them. But both for the storage reasons and from the fact that I still feel like, even though I really like a lot of the colors that are in these palettes, I look at some of the colors and I think, oh, that's really pretty. I don't like this like rainbow of colors all in one palette because I start to feel like it's not telling me a story. It's making me do all this work to try and figure out how to combine this mustard with this green, with this blue. And I would much rather have a storytelling approach to eyeshadow palettes. I hope that explanation makes sense. I just feel like bigger palettes are either super boring with lots of repetitive shades or just too many shades that don't feel cohesive to me. That's the word I'm looking for. It doesn't feel cohesive. And I know I am in the minority. I know some people look at those bigger palettes and all they see is 52 different looks that they can make and how they can combine this and this and this and they love how everything's in one palette. So now I've got all of these options all in one place. It's just not my preference. And I just have to put my thoughts out into the world. So ColourPop is doing another collab with Disney, another Disney designer. So they did Disney designer, then they did Disney villains, and now they're back doing another Disney designer collection. I'm going to assume this is part of their holiday collection, but who the heck knows with ColourPop, they announce two, three things every week, I feel like. Um, this is the Midnight Masquerade collection. It's coming with an eyeshadow palette and then little trios or little duos rather of either a blush, and a, is that a lipstick? So there's the palette, which is 22, and then there's these princess bundles, which include a luxe liquid lipstick and a pressed powder for 18. The luxe liquid lipsticks are apparently a new light and smooth formula. 
that's interesting. And then you're either getting a highlighter or a blush. It looks like you might be able to purchase those separately, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, listen, whoever does the package design at ColourPop should be given a raise. They do some of the most beautiful designs for the outsides of these packages and the boxes that they come in. I just don't think they can be beat. Their design team there is fan-freaking-tastic. This is beautiful. I'm not gonna lie, the outside packaging is beautiful. I am not really interested in the eyeshadow palette. I feel like it's got a whole bunch of those chunky press glitters, which I've talked about not liking many times over. I feel like the color story is just kind of, I don't know, it's not drawing me in. Um, I feel like it'd be one of those palettes that I would get, look at, and then not have any idea what to do with. I don't know, maybe I could figure something out. I'm sure I could, but it's not like calling to me. And then I don't really like the mini lipsticks that are inside of these. I do think some of the colors and the pressed powders look pretty, but I'm not sure I, I need this right now either. Um, I think it's a smart move for them. I think it's probably something that's going to be incredibly giftable. And I can see these getting picked up for a lot of teens, preteens and teens who would find this absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I, I, I don't have anything to really super negative to say about it other than it just doesn't really interest me. So ColourPop did come out with the Pretty Fresh line, which had a mist, a hydrating setting mist, and then a hyaluronic acid hydrating primer. I, I kind of feel like I'm gonna skip both of these. I ended up ordering the skin tint, so the moisturizing skin tint. I've heard some very nice things about it, and it did really intrigue me. I really liked that it had a large range of shades. So I have actually, and it's interesting, so I'm filming this on, what is it, October, sixth. This is the latest I've probably ever filmed this video and just given when sort of I've paced out videos to land on my channel. This one's probably going up much later into the month than I typically put this video out. So I did, I have already placed a couple of orders and I'll, I'll call those out as we get into that, but I did go ahead and buy their tinted moisturizer. I just really wasn't interested in the primer or the setting spray. The ingredients in the primer didn't interest me because it had coconut oil uh, very high up on the list and I'm trying to avoid coconut oil because I do feel like it does clog my pores. And then I couldn't tell from the hydrating mist if it had glitter in it or not. Like I couldn't tell if it was gonna end up like shooting little glitter particles all over my face as well. That's kind of all the stuff from ColourPop that I'm like, hmm. I also am gonna be skipping over the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. Now, I do think it's an interesting palette. It's just too much gold for me to want to personally buy. It's got really pretty basic shades. It also feels like it has three blacks in there and I don't even wear black, so for me, that really makes no sense. Shoot, I meant to do that earlier so I could have place to put pictures. Editing Sarah is going to be cringing now trying to fit pictures on that are as large as possible. Anyway, um, I don't feel like this one is just one that calls to me, like I said, three almost black shades. I don't need that. You've got a lot of brown in there. You've got a lot of a lot of gold. Um, I do appreciate though that she shrunk the pan sizes and as a result, the price point. It's still $129 and I don't think I can bring myself to spend that. For all of those reasons, I'm going to be saying no to this palette, but I can definitely see if people picking this up for the holidays, because I do think when you see them all swatched out here, the colors are pretty and I think it's gonna to appeal to a lot of people. I just feel like we've got a lot of repetition with some blue shades, a lot of repetition with some browns and some golds. So that's where I'm sitting. So the last sort of high-end eyeshadow palette I wanted to mention in my nopes list, and I guess it's palettes because it's three, and it's, I feel like everyone I follow on YouTube has been talking about the Anastasia Norvina releases and the fact that she just went one, two, three um, right out of the gate. So I get that it's out of character for her as a brand, and that may not be the case anymore. This may just be the new normal for Anastasia, and we are just gonna have to adjust. But I do agree with the commentary that was like, her brand used to feel more curated, and because they didn't put out as many releases when they did put something out, it like caught everybody's attention and everybody was talking about it. And now it just feels like a bit of a cash grab, putting out palette after palette after palette after palette, and so it's not feeling as special as it did before. I get that. I, I also understand that I think brands are under pressure to move faster, quicker, get newer things out quickly. 
I, you know, two things that are interesting to me, one, these palettes are made and mass produced in China as opposed to made in the United States, like the Jackie Ida palette and then the Carly Bible palette, which we'll talk about here in a minute. So these were all made in China. And I'm not saying you can't make great makeup in China. Some products that I absolutely love and adore were made in China. So I, I'm not like anti-China. I'm anti-China in the sense that it can be a cheap out way in order to go make makeup. It doesn't have to be, but it frequently is. Um, and frequently what you see is brands who are uh, selling high-end US made products when they need to get out a bigger palette or want to promote the heck out of something for holiday and make it seem like you're getting this big value for money. They can't afford to do that in the US anymore, so they're, they're exporting that to be made in China. So that's what's happened with these three palettes. Uh, listen, the color stories are not for me. I think it was um, Mia from Mia's Virtual Vanity out on Twitter who made some comment one day and it cracked me up and it, it hit home. And she said it looked like somebody bought packs of Skittles in different flavors and just dumped Skittles on a table and however they landed was how the eyeshadow palette came together. And I can't get that visual out of my head of like it just looking like this mismatch of bright colors, just kind of however they landed on the table, let's put them into a palette. And so the no rhyme or reason, the repetition of color inside of here, the brights, the primaries, like it's not my style of palette. It's not the style of makeup I prefer. It's not the looks of makeup that I prefer. I don't know, not interested in those three palettes. I will admit I'm interested in the Carly Bible one and I'm jumping around a little bit because this is kind of in my, it is in my wants list, but it's in my wants list with a big TBD on it because I want to sit on it. Uh, I want to sit on the feelings of the Carly Bible palette but I also want to see it in person. And I think this is going to be her holiday release for this year. I think this is Anastasia's holiday release is this Carly Bible palette. Um, I think the outside packaging is really pretty. I like the little sort of gold button looking things on the outside. I think that's really cute, these little button pearls. I do think the color story is really pretty. I think you've got this row of cool tones at the top and this row of warmer tones on the second row. This color palette has some really interesting tones and shades in it to me. It has a really interesting matte in that top row that has both a hint of warmth and rosiness, but also a hint of taupe. I think that's a beautiful color. The purple looks really pretty. Those two sort of like soft blue grays. Oh, those look stunning. I bet those are gorgeous on the eyes. And then you've got a really pretty taupe. Um, I feel like it's a well thought out palette. I feel like it's got all the shades that I would want. I feel like it looks like something Carly Bible would like. So I'm jumping around a little bit because I haven't finished my notes list, but I want to see this one in person and kind of see, because I feel like sometimes with palettes, it's there, the swatches can be a little misleading when they first come out. So I want to see some real swatches. I want to see, I quite frankly, I want to see them in, in person myself. LA Girls are releasing two new eyeshadow palettes. They're both labeled Fierce and Wild, one's purple and one's blue. Um, I think it's an interesting combination of colors. You've got purples and greens and neutrals in one, and then you've got warmer neutrals and blues in the second one. Um, my biggest challenge is, is I tried this formula at the beginning of the year and I don't like it. So I had tried, it's sitting here, um, this guy here, which was their Haute Heat, Heat palette. And I really found the mattes to be lackluster at best. And then none of these shimmer shades picked up well. It was also a lot bigger than I thought it would be or needed to be, quite frankly. So I, I was kind of disappointed with this palette. So it makes me uninterested in trying these new ones. One palette that I stared at for a long while, but I think I've ultimately decided it's probably not, it's not enough for me that I wanna go purchase it. It's from BH Cosmetics, and you guys have heard me talk, I do really like their eyeshadow formula. I think it's probably the only eyeshadow formula that gives ColourPop a run for their money at the drugstore. It really is that good. Um, but BH Cosmetics is launching a new collaboration. There's a German YouTuber I wasn't familiar with. I think it's Alicia Marie. It's called 1991. Um, you've got a row of shimmers at the top and then a row of sort of murky, rusty, grungy colors that I thought were really, really pretty. And honestly, that row of mattes is what really kind of caught my eye. And I was like, ooh, look at those rusty mattes and look at the mauves. I really liked the top 
row as a thought and I liked the bottom row as a thought and I don't know if I would end up liking them together as a cohesive thought. There's a lot going for this palette but ultimately I don't think it's one that I am going to pick up. And then the last thing that I wanted to mention in my notes list is something that also kind of caught my eye but I I, I really feel like no is probably the best answer for me when it comes to these palettes. And these are just showed up on Ulta's website today. Now, um, Make Revolution is doing five different palettes for the holiday. They're calling them their Precious Stones palettes. Um, it's a matte mixture of mattes, shimmers, and foils. But the color story on these palettes really caught my eye because there were color stories that I just don't feel like like they were different, like they were grounded enough to tell a complete story. They weren't like all over the page, Skittles on a table kind of style, but they brought in some really interesting color stories that I just, I haven't seen before. I really liked the direction that that green palette went. I really liked the one that had sort of the uh, purple, it was the purple outside packaging and it had sort of these like blues inside that I thought looked really pretty. I even thought the warm tone palette was nice because it pulled in like shades of fuchsia and corals along with some mauves and taupes that I thought a really interesting mix of warm and cool shades in there. I find Makeup Forever shadows to be mediocre at best. I've tried a, quite a few that I just don't like at all. And then I find some that I think are fine, but not great. Like they don't wow me the way that ColourPop or BH does. So I, I'm interested in this because I feel like it looks like it's a different formula. Um, perhaps than before. I don't recognize this pan size. It, the textures look different than I've seen before. I, I'm an enough nervous and I'm enough gun shy on Makeup Revolution shadows that unless I see these in stores and I swatch them and they blow my mind, like all of them blow my mind, I, I will probably skip over these, but I have to give Makeup Revolution kudos because I do feel like they've gone from just being a copycat brand where they're just copying Too Faced and Tarte and so on and so forth. And they still do an element of that, but they've also, whoever did the color stories for these five holiday palettes, just, it's nice. It's really nice. All right, so let's talk about the wants list. So what are things that I'm interested in picking up? I mentioned to you guys that I had already ordered the ColourPop um, Hyaluronic Skin Tint, so that is on its way to me. I did place a ColourPop order. It's been a while since I've ordered from ColourPop. Yeah, see, I'm looking at my order history. I used to sometimes order twice a month from ColourPop, um, or I was ordering every other month, so I would order or I would order in September and October. This year I have ordered, um, I ordered in February, beginning of February. I ordered a small order in April on the 9th. And then that was my last order until October. And I feel like it's because I'm somewhat overwhelmed, somewhat uninterested, somewhat always waiting for the next thing. And I think this is where it can bite ColourPop in the butt a little bit by launching so many things all at once. Is like, I'm that person who's like, do I really wanna place this order? Because maybe the thing they launch next, I would prefer. So I'm always like, well, let's wait and see what they put out this week. And then, I'll, and then I kind of hem and haw and I'm like, no, I still like the one from the week prior, but oh, let's just wait and see what they put out next week. And so it's like, I've, as opposed to wanting to try everything, what I, my reaction has been is like, I'm, I'm in a constant wait and see mode with ColourPop, like what's next, what's next, what's next, as opposed to wanting to try every release that comes out. And that's part of what's going on. The other thing that's going on is I haven't really liked, and I talked about this, I think in my last Will I Buy It, I don't really like the nine pan series they've been doing of primary colors, nine primary style colors in a palette. It's just not been my, it's not my cup of tea. I don't want an all blue eyeshadow palette. I don't want an all green eyeshadow palette. I am in the minority here, but that just doesn't appeal. So all that to say, I did place a color pop order. So I got the skin tint. Um, I also ordered a just a tint lip color. What color did I end up getting? I think it was Z Boys, if I remember correctly. I was staring at it out on Timtalia. Yes, so I did order one of the sort of lip crayons that are supposed to be super moisturizing. I've heard a lot of nice things about them. It's a style of product I do enjoy. So I tried the shade Z Boys, which I think is gonna be a really nice warm neutral. 
I also got a Super Shock Shadow in the shade Ritz. This is one that I've seen Mariah Leonard use a ton, and it's one of those ones that has super fine micro shimmer, so it's one of those ones that ends up making your, not look like you have glitter on your eyes, but makes it look like your eye is just super glossy and almost wet. So I'm super curious about the shade Ritz because I think it's gonna be one of those shades that works really well, I mean, on its own, but over top of other eyeshadows because of its sheerness and sort of wet factor. I think it's gonna be one of those ones where even with today's eye look, I could take a little and kind of gently rub it over the top of my eyeshadow look and it would add this whole wet factor to it. That's what I'm hoping happens with that one. And then I did go ahead and order four single press shadows for my magnetic palette. I did order the shade Paper Tiger. When I was talking to you guys about shades that I thought were missing in my collection, I said I was missing that really nice mustard color and a number of you said Paper Tiger was fantastic. So I did order that. And then they just released a new shade called Trooper, which looked makes Paper Tiger look almost a little more mustard, like almost more of the color of my shirt, more orangey and Trooper looks like a, like a really, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a grungy yellow, like a yellow that has a lot of gray temp in it, honestly. So it looks like a murky yellow and I thought that was a really pretty color. And then I was interested in the shade Anthem because I feel like a lot of my, a lot of the eyeshadow colors that start to go into that red family aren't actually red. As I looked at some of my deeper shades, what I realized was that they were actually more plummy. They had very purpley undertones. They went very plum and cranberry as opposed to a true sort of smoky red color. And so Anthem to me looks like it could be the perfect sort of reddish all over lid shade. And then I also uh, got the shade Miser, which I think is gonna be really pretty. And they describe it as a duochrome with, a, so a metallic terracotta with a blue-green duochrome. And that just seems right up my alley. So I feel like I've been missing some of those like warmer terracotta, murky reddish tones. And so that is kind of my color pop order. Um, I should also, let's just get out of the way the things that I have already ordered. So the other thing that I ordered and actually I haven't used yet. I was thinking I was gonna use it today and then I didn't. I did order the Alter Ego Sahara palette, which is the dupe for the Natasha Denona Biba palette. Um, I liked, to me, that felt like a very murky fall palette and I was, I've been thinking about the kinds of fall eyeshadow looks that I like and it's like a lot of people point to these bright leaf colors because we've got maple trees that are like bright orange and bright red. And because I'm not into those super strong primary style colors, I prefer more muted colors. This palette to me just seemed like, it's not leaves when they first turn, it's like leaves the color before they fall off the tree or more like the leaf colors that you find after they've been sitting on your grass and have started to die. <laughs> Sounds very morbid, but that's kind of what I think about with the uh, Alter Ego Sahara palette. Plus I really liked that it had some of the grays in there. And one of the things that I had called out in my eyeshadow palette sort of organization with all my magnetic um, eyeshadows is that I was missing some grays and I actually ordered some grays from Davina. And I, I, I gotta be honest, I didn't end up being very impressed with the Davina eyeshadows. Um, I actually ha thought they were very crumbly. Um, two of my matte grays um, were sitting in magnetic palettes up with the rest of my magnetic palettes. And when I opened that palette about a week later, the grays had basically exploded all over the inside. None of my other shadows had done that, but both of my matte Davina shadows had just fallen apart in the pan. So I don't really have the, the grays in my collection that I want. And so I really liked this palette because it had the gray into sort of that like grayy black at the end. And these are removable. So these are ones that I can use my little magnetic tool to remove. In fact, I'll show you. I still find this like super satisfying, by the way. This has not gotten old in the least. So here is the Sahara palette there. And, you know, with the magnetic tool, they just pop right out. So I'm gonna be able to pull these grays out and use them in different palettes and with different gray looks when I feel like I need those colors. So I feel like this solved my gray problem as well as just gave me this like murky dead leaf vibe that I'm kind of feeling for fall this year.
Another brand that I'm always interested in because I also feel like they're a little bit more curated, they're ones that aren't coming out with like a thousand products all of the time, is Flower Beauty. And so I feel like she releases, you know, a handful of products maybe twice a year. But in general, I've been super impressed with the products that she's put out um, to the point that I feel like I have a giant cart of flower stuff that I would like to order. But she's put out some new products for fall. Um, and I kind of feel like I'm going to get a lot of these. One is a Jungle Lights shadow palette. So this is going to be a heavily foiled eyeshadow palette. It is $19. It's a little pricey. I love the colors that they have in there. I think they would mix together really well. Like I look at the six colors they picked and I think pick any two shades in those palettes, mix them together like lighter to darker or in two parts on your eyes and they would all go well together. Like the light champagne and the light purple, the purple and the salmon pink above it, the purple and the green, the green and the gold. Like honestly, I, I look at this and I just see so many combinations of like two shadow shades that I think would be absolutely stunning and I'm really interested in this texture that I mean they're describing it as an, a shimmery pressed pigment one swipe intense color payoff and prismatic finish so I'm, I'm very interested in the style of formula here because I don't think it's something she's done before in terms of eyeshadow formula she's also got another product that really caught my eye this is the day glow highlighting glaze it comes in two colors and I'm super curious as to whether or not this is a dupe for the RMS Beauty um, Living Luminizer type of product because it says that it is gives a glossy effect, weightless feel, infused with ultra fine pearl, but it's like a dewy glass skin sheen is what, how they're describing it. And that is just all of the things I've been wanting lately. And I feel like I've been finding mostly those formulas at the um, higher end price points, but I'm not finding a ton of this style of product at the drugstore. And so whenever I see a drugstore brand starting to go after the vibes of something like an RMS Beauty or a Kosas or a Glossier, I get very interested. And so that definitely has intrigued me for 10 bucks. I will definitely be trying that. She's released something called her pyramids cheek color I love a glowy blush so I am really interested in the rose shades and I feel like potentially this could be both blush and highlighter like I could swirl it all together get a blush and then potentially target a smaller brush into that corner and highlight with so I think that's kind of cool so I was kind of talking smack about the color pop setting spray the hyaluronic acid setting spray and how I didn't want to pick any more setting sprays up and yada 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 and I might have to eat my words because one of the things out on this website that did catch my eye now that I'm looking at it again and remember is they have a new seal the deal luminizing setting spray um, it's kind of it's a biphase formula so you've got some um, oil so it says it's uh, primrose oil and vitamin E in that top layer and then hyaluronic acid and aloe vera in the bottom layer and then you shake it together and squirt it out so part of me wonders if this is going to be very similar to the uh, effect that I get from that very uber expensive glow recipe watermelon face mist that I do like so much. Another thing that caught my eye is from Galactic, and I can't even remember where this came up. I think it just showed up on my Instagram feed one day and Girl Like Tech's a brand that I don't think I've ever tried before, but they have something called a Dewy Skin Gloss Duo in a shade called Radiance that seems to be more of a peachy pearl and more of a champagne pearl. And in theory, it's that, once again, that glossy sort of skin effect, that highlight that looks like just wet and glossy as opposed to like metallic and highlightery. And so the form, because it was like a two pan kind of thing, because you're getting two shades in one, it kind of caught my eye. It is $26, so it's not like drugstore pricing, but it's also not like $40 really expensive kind of thing either. So. It caught my eye. Whether or not I pull the trigger and get this, I, I don't know. Um, but I did put it on my list because it, it intrigued me enough that I was like researching um, swatches and colors and it was a product I hadn't heard anybody talk about. And I think to some degree it may be because they were just ahead of the curve a little bit as it relates to the style of highlighter, which I feel like we're seeing a lot more of now. Eyeshadow palettes. Um, outside the flower one that caught my eye, a couple other ones that caught my eye. We talked about the ABH Carly Bible palette. I want to see that one in person, but that one is definitely on my potential buy list. 
I also still have the Zoeva Melody eyeshadow palette on my radar, although it's one of those ones that the more I stare at it, even though I love the color story, part of me is feeling like, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm, you know how said sometimes you sit and stew on something, so I think I put the Zoeva Melody palette on my list uh, for last month. And sometimes I think when you sit and stew on something for a while, the more you come back to it, the less certain you are that you wanna buy it. And I kinda feel like that's where I am with the Zoeva one. And once I saw the Carly Bible palette, part of me started to feel like some of the colors that were in that uh, Zoeva one are kind of in the Carly Bible, so they're starting to feel a little redundant to one another, not 100% but enough so that I don't know if I feel quite right in getting both of them. I don't know, I, I, need to, I need to let this one stew for a while longer in my brain before I make a decision. Okay, me being stupid. So I've never bought anything Charlotte Tilbury holiday in my life. I've never been able to get over the price point for her eyeshadow palettes. Kind of have had a reaction to that, almost like Natasha Denona in the sense that like, Oh, do I really want to pay that much? Because I think they're what, 75? Okay, yeah, her eyeshadow palette is 75. So that is really expensive. Now, uh, so I've looked at the these palettes for the last two years. The first one was kind of purpley. Last year's was more warm toned. This year's one is really interesting to me because it's a mix of warm tones in the front end and cool tones in the back end. And I feel like I might be a little bit of a broken record here, but I really like cool and warm tones together. And I like wearing them together. And I like palettes that have cool and warm tones in them as opposed to just all being very, I don't wanna say one note because that sounds very judgy, but like not just a single, I'm gonna be just a warm palette. And hers, with the neutral in the first little trio, more warm tones, sort of sunsetty colors in the second, olives in the third, and then sort of these smoky, silvery colors in the third or fourth. Something about this palette really, really catches my eye. Now, I'm actually going and getting my hair done on Tuesday. And I was talking to the girl who does my hair, who's also a friend, and um, she's already purchased this palette. So I'm like, okay, I haven't seen this in person yet. I know it's at our Nor local Nordstrom, so I could go in and see it, but can you just bring it on Tuesday? And as you're, as we're like doing my hair, I can like swatch it and play with it. So I'm gonna see this one in person. She owns both quads as well as palettes from Charlotte. And she does say that this palette formula is different and she actually thinks it's better than her quads. Part of the reason I've never pulled the trigger and paid this besides the $75 price point um, is just that I've never loved her quads. Like I like her special sort of glitter topper shade that's in, always in the bottom left corner, but I've always found her eyeshadows to just be okay. Like I work with them. I think they make beautiful looks, but they don't like blow me away for its $54 price point. So I've always been like, mm, do I really want to spend $75 when my experience with her eyeshadow has just been like, it's fine. So uh, I wanna see and touch and feel this one in person. She swears up and down that the color story, or rather the formula is different and she likes this one far better. She said she's been wearing this pretty much nonstop for the last month and she's gotten so many questions from people what she has in her eyes. And she also says each of these trios really make beautiful looks in and of themselves. So uh, dang it, she's kind of selling me on this palette. I'm still trying to decide if I can get past this like gut reaction of being like, ooh. I do also think that the packaging, this sort of blue packaging she's done on the outside is gorgeous. But the other thing that she's put out for holiday is one of those instant looks in a palette. Now, these uh, tend to come out as limited edition products and they have three eyeshadows at the top, two blushes in the middle, a highlight and a bronzer. And I've never bought one because by the time I really even had my eye on any of them, uh, all of the early ones were gone and the only one that was available on the market for probably the last two years has been like a smoky one which didn't really intrigue me at all like I don't if I was going to buy this it would be because I like the entire color story and I like the idea of quite frankly grabbing this palette and putting it in my travel bag and like everything is there like everything is there in this nice compact size with a big mirror in a very classy way in formulas that I really like. So she's done this instant look at a palette called Gorgeous Glowing Beauty and I really like this color story a lot. I like the eyeshadows. I can see the eye look it would make. It would be beautiful. Um, I feel like I could do an all over matte look with that third shade and I would love it. I would love and then all three together would be beautiful. The 
Only thing that's giving me a hint of pause here is the two face products. So I do think that the two cheek products are probably beautiful together because I'm a little nervous and looking at the photos online that the bronzer is orangey. And I, I, I really, I don't want an orangey bronzer. Like if that bronzer is orangey, I, I wouldn't even consider getting this. And then the highlight, it looks really light. And so it could just be a really light pearl and it could actually be a perfect color for me. Or it could be that like, light yellow gold that can go a hint green. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but some little, some highlighters that are like white gold have almost this weird greenish shift to it. I don't know how else to describe it. And so my gut tells me that's probably not it, but I would wanna make sure that that highlighter worked for me as well. Last I checked, my Nordstrom had gotten the eyeshadow palette, but it hadn't gotten the face palette. Um, yeah, it's still the same thing. So I don't know if it's going to come into a store near me or if this is just an online exclusive for her. Um, if it's just an online exclusive for her, I probably won't get this, even though it does appeal to me uh, on a number of fronts. Like I, I really could see myself making this like my primary travel palette. I feel like everything in there is the colors that I would wanna wear for work. I think I would just be really nervous about ordering something for $75 sight unseen with two shades that kind of make me nervous from the photos. And then uh, quite frankly, I'm probably gonna reach out to um, the manager of our Charlotte Tilbury counter at Nordstrom's because let's be clear, we have a texting relationship um, and just ask her if they're getting that in stock or not because uh, I really would like to see that in, in in real life. And I feel like if I could see both of these in real life, I could pretty quickly make up my mind whether or not either one of these is worth bringing into my collection. All right, guys, so that is it. That is everything on my needs, nopes, and wants list. I think this video is going to be incredibly long. So if you are still watching, thank you for hanging out with me this long. Let me know down in the comment what you are thinking about these products or if anything else has caught your eye this month, or if you're on a no buy or a low buy, how is that going for you? Would love to hear kind of how you've been processing new releases and what you're thinking about things, all the feelings about holiday, etc. Love chatting with you guys down in the comments uh, about makeup and just things in general. So hope you're having an amazing week. Talk to you soon. Bye.